I am not by any means the end all be all of pottery things, so take it with a grain of salt. Okay? Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's a whirlwind. Hey, hey, what is up, my pottery posse? Uh, today we are going to be discussing something long requested and I'm pretty excited about it. And I hope you remember these guys because he was amazing, but then something fell on it. So I hope you remember him. They was amazing too, but I have plans on them turning out different and uh, they needed some reglazing. So that's what we're gonna do today. today, today. We are going to be reglazing. Today's tutorial has a boatload of information, so buckle up and let's get started. Now, we're gonna start off with this sweet guy. Now, if you didn't watch the video of me slip casting for the first time, go check it out and you'll see exactly when and why this mug got so messed up. We need to first start off with sanding off any inconsistencies. So, if there's too much glaze in a spot or if something else stuck to it and you had to break it apart, go ahead and sand those areas down. While I do that, I'm gonna explain some things to you. Now, this next piece of information is extremely important, so make sure to take note. Sanding ceramics can and will put out tiny glass particles and other little things into the air, which is very harmful when you breathe it in. And it can have lasting consequences, which is why sanding my ceramics is a last resort situation for me. If you have to sand any of your ceramics, be sure that you take the proper safety precautions. Anytime that you sand your ceramics, be it already glazed or the raw clay itself, you really should make sure that you are in a well-ventilated area or outside and you have the proper mask that is rated for fine dust particles and as an added precaution, keep things wet and that's going to help to cut down on any dust that it's going to make. The best thing to use for sanding pottery is actually called a grinding pad. You can buy them as round stickers and then stick them to a bat and use it on your wheel with lots of water. However, those are mostly used and recommended for leveling the bottom of your pottery and they can be kind of expensive. Okay, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt myself here because <laughs> listening to this and fast forward is hilarious. I'm only doing this times two and listen to how fast I started going. <laughs> I promise, I promise, I'm only doing this time too. Okay, okay, that's enough. Back to, back to learning. Side note, don't worry too much about if you kind of scuff up other parts of your pottery that you didn't really mean to. Once we actually do the second glaze firing, that's all gonna remelt and fuse back together and there's not gonna be any visible scratches. So don't you worry about it. I am using 120 grit. You can always start off with a rougher grit, but you always need to work your way back down to a finer grit so the surface is not too rough. By the way, I'm really sorry about the poor lighting. It was raining the entire week and I was trying to get this filmed, so I had no natural light. Once you've got everything nice and smoothed out, this needs to be thoroughly cleaned before you start putting any glaze over top. I wouldn't usually recommend putting underglaze directly onto a refire, but as many of you know, I love experimenting, so that's exactly what this is. I'm gonna do the experiment so you don't have to. Now onto glazing. Just using the same cobalt here, and then I'll put some clear over the underglaze when it dries. Make sure to only do three coats where there's no glaze, but if there is glaze, just do one or two coats. You don't want the glaze to bubble up or have any pinholes. Ah, the sun came out so much better. Don't get me wrong, I love rain, but not for filming. This mug is beautiful how it is, but there's a bubble on the top of the handle and then there's a spot with no glaze at all on the bottom of the handle. So I've got to fix that. 
I went ahead and put a second color over top to match the band around it. And when I made this mug, I didn't have my logo stamp, so I'm gonna do that and put some clear on it. Here's my next mug, one that I've wanted to reglaze for a while. The glaze didn't mix well, and I've got these little pin holes all over. I know that a Mako seaweed works really well with both these glazes I already have on here, so I'm just gonna put a layer of seaweed over all the pin holes, and we'll see if that fixes the problem. The way I see it, I can't sell it as it is, and I don't like how it looks now, so if I experiment, I've got nothing to lose. When dealing with high fire glazes, remember that they're composed of different elements that react with each other at certain temperatures. Like a blue glaze, which has iron or red iron oxide in it, and is red as a liquid and blue when it comes out of the kiln. So when layering glazes, those chemicals may not react the same. Always test your glazes, both together and individually, in your kiln before putting them on your pieces. But that's another video. This one is amazing, but it has this one spot that's without glaze. If you're curious why, check out the original video where I made these. Sorry, it's out of focus. I don't know what happened. This one just has some ugly drips and I wanna reglaze the raw clay. I don't like the feeling. As you can see, even though this is raw clay with no glaze on it, it's not soaking up the glaze like normal. That's because it has already been through a cone five high firing. When clay is at its plastic state, plastic basically just meaning pliable, it is extremely porous and all those pores are filled with water. As it starts drying out more and more, the water evaporates, causing the clay particles and platelets to shrink closer and closer together, becoming less porous. Before the clay is ever fired, you can take the clay through that cycle an infinite amount of times. This is my bucket of reclaim and it contains clay that I have cut off of other pieces and things like that and I will reconstitute it using water and use it for something else. Once the clay has been fired for the first time in what is called a bisque firing, it can no longer be brought back to that plastic stage and has a new baseline of porousness. At this point, your piece is considered bisque ware. It has a particular ring to it that you don't hear with greenware or unfired clay. If you lightly flick greenware, it'll have kind of a dense sound that almost sounds like a thud but if you flick bisque wear it sounds like this and this is what it sounds like after a high firing if something on the piece is broken however it'll sound like this bisque wear is much more porous than glaze wear this mug also has some pretty ugly looking drips, so I'm going to put a clear glaze on it and then redo some of those drips. Once a piece has been glazed, while in the kiln, there's a chemical reaction that takes the glaze from being a paintable liquid to a glass-like solid that coats the surface of your clay. Now, there are two general classifications for glaze. That is a high fire and low fire. Generally, a low fire glaze gets fired at the same temperature as a bisque firing, which is cone 05. So if you have left part of your piece as raw clay, but later change your mind and want to reglaze that piece, that area that was unglazed should should be just as porous as when you glazed it the first time. However, a high fire is much hotter and will shrink those pores even more. If you can tell here, these two test tiles were exactly the same size. The white one has only been through a bisque firing and the blue one has been through a cone five high firing. You can see just how much it's shrunk. This mug has been through a high firing and the clay is less porous. So the glaze will take hours to dry versus the normal seconds or maybe minutes. Again, on this one, I'm just gonna clear glaze this raw clay. Nothing's wrong with anything else. The only thing wrong with this one is that the glaze bubbled up on the bottom of the handle. And then there's this one, where the underglaze and the glaze did not play nicely together. And there's tons of pinholes. I'm gonna put a layer of seaweed on this one too, and hopefully it works the same, even though it's a different base color than the other one. But I did put seaweed on the inside and it looks nice. Yep, it's not dry yet, so now we wait.
So it took about an hour and a half for that to dry. I went ahead and put a second coat on because it was raining and I wasn't gonna film in the rain and yet here I am in the dark again. So I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly do the drips and we're gonna call it a day. Just cleaning this off a bit because I don't want my existing glaze to run into my clear glaze too much. And here they all are, glazed, beautiful, and ready for their second firing. Don't be like me, or I guess you can be like me, just be really careful and brave. I almost didn't put this guy in here, but I wanted to finish out this firing so, so badly. So I stuck him in the middle and he's actually sticking up into the peephole by about two centimeters. It should be fine, but we'll see. Boom, beautiful. Wow, I mean, really, wow. These came out even better than I expected them to. The colors are so rich and lovely and I didn't get any more problem areas. So here's the before and afters. Flawless, like it never even happened. So I had a comment asking if I minded the crazing I was getting. Well, I do, but it's only happening with my clear glazes and I've tried everything to get rid of it from altering the glaze to altering the clay and nothing is working. But I decided to only do two layers of clear on these and it actually worked. I don't really like the look of the thin glaze, but there's no crazing except the areas where the glaze accidentally overlapped making a third layer, which you see right here. There are some pointers and other things that I wanna try and bring to your attention real quick. For instance, when you're reglazing, you have to remember that especially with high fires, the glaze that you have already fired on will still melt and move and react more. So something that you put in that is beautiful and just needed one little touch up may come out looking completely different after the second firing. This is a great example of that. I guess that's it for today, folks. I hope you really enjoyed this video. I sure did. I always do. Thank you so much for watching till the end. If you uh, feel like subscribing, maybe do that here, and then maybe watch a video here, and then maybe a playlist here. But yeah, if you don't feel like doing that, that's okay. Just remember, it's free. I guess until the next time, I will see you then. Goodbye.